angry guy here and passport bro critics are now praising the passport bros after trying it for themselves so let's just go ahead and jump right into the video about the passport bros movement that felt a little sleazy and pathetic my perspective was similar to the prevailing attitude which was something like this movement was for guys who were too low status or unattractive to beat out their intrasexual competition here they couldn't get laid in the states so they basically engage in geo arbitrage to leverage a relative advantage that wouldn't exist in their home country i'm not a fragile guy I'm not a loser who can't get laid. I'm not a guy without options. I don't need to travel halfway around the world to have satisfying relationships with women. But I now understand why it's in men's best interest to seek out the most advantageous marketplaces. It's like, regardless of whether you're a novice or a master fisherman, if you want to catch a certain kind of fish, it makes sense to go where there are more of those fishes. High value men who have lots of sexual opportunity in the West will still travel to other places where they can get more of what they want more easily so evidently basically he went over to japan and you know he got to experience a different little different bit of life for a while and then he came back and he's like now yeah i see what the password bros are talking about for the longest time people cannot comprehend you know and this is what a lot of women are trying to push these are the men who can't get a woman in Western society. And that's why they're going over to these other countries where the women don't speak English and they're, they're poor and, you know, they, and, and they're uneducated and, you know, they're desperate. So that's why they're getting, you know, hooking up with these passport bros. And the, the truth of the matter is that it's a complete and utter, it's a lie. It's a lie. You know, these are the, the, the guys who are leaving are the guys with the bread. Any man that is going to sit around and go out there and say, well, okay, I want to, I want a relationship with a woman and, you know, and women in Western society say that you need to make at least six figures or above six figures to be with someone who has a high body count, right? Or someone who, you know, is an only fool's content creator. And this person doesn't cook, doesn't clean, is not family orientated. And this is, these are your options. So you're going to have to pay more and get substantially less. And everything is based around the fact that they're the only ones in the relationship that have real value because they bring their value by simply existing. And you have to provide food for them. You have to provide shelter for them. You need to provide a maid for uh, someone to clean for them. You have to provide every single thing. And they bring no utility at all other than their presence. And they believe that just by them existing in the relationship, that's enough. That is narcissism. That is utter narcissism. You have a lot of password bros, and that's, I would say, the majority of them that are going overseas, and they're going to countries where there is classism, and they are not looking for women who have come from a certain class. They're looking for women who are just simply fit, feminine, and friendly, and happy to establish a family with them. And that's it. And they'll work hard, they'll provide for these women, and in return, these women will cook, clean, raise children, and treat them like kings. And in return, they treat their women, they treat these women quite well. And they don't have to deal with the day-to-day -day stresses that women that men in Western society are dealing with. Because Western society is very, very stressful. It's like it's 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 literally like a a pressurized chamber. You know, it's it. guys are tired. Men are tired. And it's like I've said this before and I'll say it again. The men that are walking away, they don't want these people. They don't want to have relationships with what's available in, in Western society. They're not interested. You know, they are rejecting what's available in Western society. And they're deliberately they're going overseas to find to find, you know, relationships where you have people who have traditional values. This doesn't mean that, you know, they're walking around covered from head to toe, no face being, their face isn't revealed, nothing, nothing like that. But they have integrity, they have decency, they have morals and self-respect, which is something that you can see is very much lacking in Western society today. And I've talked about this before, that when these men leave, these women will no longer have access to these men anymore.
Here's the simple truth. Even with these simps who go overseas, and they're still simps overseas, you know, they, they leave the West, they were simps, and they go overseas, and they're still simps. The fact of the matter is that they still don't want to come back. You know, they were simps in Western society, and they were basically, you know, su struggling and suffering to get just about anything. And then they go overseas, and suddenly it's like, oh, it's night and day. And even the Sims don't want to come back. And that's why women in Western society are furious because they know that they're losing access to these men. The Simp economy is a massive economy, guys. It is, a, it is an economy that is likely worth anywhere from $100 billion to maybe in the hundreds of billions of dollars on a yearly basis. That is the value of the Simp economy. And the, the amount of money, wealth, and resources that women are able to extract from the simp economy. We're talking about everything from only fools to dating and relationships to the beta male orbiters to the simps in in, in, in politics. It's a it's a it's an extremely valuable economy. And women have been tapped into that economy for decades now, and they are literally living off just that economy. Some some women don't buy groceries because they basically just schedule dates with various simps and have them pay their bills, have them pay for food. And they'll go out and they'll order enough so that they can bring something home and they'll just stack up their fridge that way. They need meals for they need meals for the entire day. They'll go on three dates. Three dates in the same day. They'll get brunch. They'll take their thing. They'll take they'll take something to go. They'll get lunch. They'll take that to go. They'll take something to go. They'll get dinner. They'll take something to go. They'll use they'll use apps where they'll have they'll have these guys bring food to the door. They'll take the food and then tell the guy to leave. This is how they operate. They have a guy that buys them if they want to, if they want to, uh, you know, they want a drink. They have a guy that'll come and get them a drink, bring them a drink. If they want food, they have a guy that'll come and bring them food. If they need their rent paid, they'll have a guy that they'll pay their rent for them or, or they'll split it up. They'll have multiple guys. They'll, they'll, you know, cover different pieces of it. If they have a problem with their computer, a laptop or anything, they'll find a guy that'll do that. They'll fix it for them. I was once a simp. I once once a simp. All of us were once simps, but we learned. We learned. The true simps are the ones who don't learn, and they keep on simping. But the thing is that even with those guys, the moment they leave the West, the moment they step foot out of Western society, and they are treated like rock stars, even though they're simps, they don't want to go back. They're like, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I'm not going back to Western society. You know, this guy, he basically stepped outside of Western society for just a moment, went over to Japan, and he saw a much higher quality of, of people there. They saw that he saw that men had much better options there. Women with traditional values. And he realized these men are doing it right. If you look at Western society right now, why would a high value man, and he pointed this out, his channel is called Psychax. He pointed this out. Why would a high value man want someone with a high body count? Want someone that's, that's you know, I mean, for example, you have a much smaller pool of of traditional women in the U.S. in Western society, which makes it even, which means that you have fewer you have fewer to choose from, and they're going to cost more. Or you can go to a country where they are more abundant, and as a result, it costs less. Just because you're a millionaire. Doesn't mean that you should be that you should be paying spending a hundred dollars for one dollar cup of coffee. That's how you go broke. That's how you go broke, and then people will mock you like, "Yeah, look at what you were doing. Look at what you were spending." 
you're spending um you're spending a hundred dollars for a one dollar cup of coffee. And then after you know you lose that after you know you ha- they have one of these relationships and it wipes out half or more of their wealth, no one cares. You have to be smart. You have to be smart. Western women don't want to comprehend that they will no longer have access to these men. Once the simp economy begins to dissipate, it's hard. And that's why I call it men walking away, because it's men walking away from Western society, relationships in Western society, and saying we're done. And even if they don't go overseas, if they remain in Western society, they're only going to make, they're going to only going to work enough to make enough for them to survive. They're not looking to expand. They're not looking to build a, to start a family and have children. They're not looking to do those things. All right. So what they're doing is that they're they're actually consolidating their lives so that they can live peaceful lives as best as possible. And they'll have everything that they need, most of the things that they want, and none of the stress. And if they want some recreational fun, they'll go overseas. They'll hop on a plane, go to DR for a couple of days. I've already said this, guys. A lot of that's what a lot of guys who work and have nine to fives, that's what they're gonna do. But there's also the other guys who are doing remote work or they found a way to make money through passive income where they really don't work very much at all. And these guys, you know, they're gonna they'll have a place, maybe a camper or whatever, and they will live very, very cheap in the US. They will prepare their own food, they'll cut everything back. And many of these guys will have a place overseas in, in country in a, in a in Mexico or in the Dominican Republic or in Costa Rica. They will have an actual apartment there or a house that they are renting. Some of these people will even purchase the property or build a property there. And when they want, when they want to go, go when they want to do something, they'll just leave the country. They'll just fly when they want to date, have some fun, you know you know, some recreational youth, they'll just leave the country and go on some dates and whatever. They'll come back to the U.S. when they feel like it. They'll leave the country when they feel like it. This is how it's... Guys, think about it. For a lot of these places, it's like an hour and a half, an hour, depending on where you are in the U.S., for example. If you're in... If you are in... uh, Where is it? If you're in Florida... You can fly from Florida to to the Dominican Republic very, very quickly. Or a place in the Caribbean very, very quickly. Or Mexico very, very quickly. It's it's crazy, but it's true. Women don't realize that men have walked away and they're not coming back. They're done with Western society, they're done with relationships with Western society. They don't want what Western society is offering anymore. And if they do reside in Western society, they're not going to have relationships here anymore. This is it. This is there's no coming back from this. After M2, that was the end of it. And I do predict, I do predict that while the label feminism will go, they go away, the legacy will live forever. I also think that M2 will never truly end. Because as many women become, you know, more, and I as they become you know, they face more economic hardships in Western society, they're going to start using, they're going to go on a whole other war path with, M, with M2 all over again, because that's their way of survival, you know, saying that, oh, well, this person did this and that, and I need compensation. And you're going to have more, more women doing this. You're going to have a lot more women doing this, because as times become hard economically, they're going to look at men and companies to where they can leverage, where they can basically present the narrative that, you know, this happened to them at by this person or in these places, and they need compensation. And it doesn't matter if it's true or not, because legally, they can't, there, there are no repercussions to doing this. There are no financial consequences to doing this. And that's as, and that's, it's, 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 it's as clear as night and day. Most companies will just settle. Most companies will just settle. What do you guys think regarding this? Password bro critics 
are now praising the Password Bros after trying it for themselves. I want to hear your thoughts on this in the comments, so let's talk about it there. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA, man, walking away. And cheers.